Welcome to this video presentation in which we take another look at the Fourier demonstration which I did in the previous presentation. Um, and in this presentation I just want to take a look at the frequency content of uh, the signals that we dealt with. I'm going to take a close look at the first uh, signal, the one that I synthesized. So here is the signal and we saw that there was one, two, three, four sinusoids added together will reproduce this original signal. And what I'd like to do here is to try to work out what the frequency content of this signal will look like. So I want to see what the frequency content of this red signal, which exactly matches the blue one that was there earlier, um, I want to see what the frequency content of this will look like. And if you remember from the very first presentation that I did on, uh, on the frequency domain, you'll recall that each sinusoid, or sorry, well, a sinusoid um, in the time domain will appear as a spike in the frequency domain. Now in this case we have a, a signal here which is made up of four sinusoids which have been added together. So each of the four sinusoids should have a, a spike associated with it. Okay, so I'm just going to move into an area in which I can draw over this figure. There we go. And um, let's just try to get a, a a, a rough idea about what the frequency content will look like and then we'll we'll show you the actual frequency content. So I'll just sketch over this here. So on the frequency content we have two axes, we have the frequency and the magnitude, which is labelled M. Okay. Now taking a look at so I, I, I expect to have four spikes and each spike will indicate the frequency of the the signal. And while we don't know the frequencies exactly, we can we can talk about them relative to each other. For example, the lowest frequency component is this it has the smallest amplitude. So that little pink line there, if you recall, that ha is a sinusoid. It's a very slowly changing sinusoid. Um, so that that would ha that has a low amplitude. So the lowest frequency has a very low amplitude, so I'm just going to show it as a red spike like that, very low amplitude. Now the, the next lowest frequency uh, sinusoid there, or frequency component as I sometimes refer to it, so the sinusoid, I also refer to that as a frequency component. Now for the next lowest, slowest um, frequency component or sinusoid is this green one here which has a large amplitude relative to all the other. So it seems to be a good bit higher frequency than the, the pink one. So we might put it roughly there but give it a, a much higher amplitude. There's a much higher amplitude. Um, now the third lowest frequency would be the blue or torquoise line and it's got a its amplitude is looks like it's roughly half of the green so um, and relative frequency wise what are they um, well the black one looks like it's about twice the frequency so the blue one will be not quite twice so we'll put it around here and its amplitude is about half, whereas the black one is probably twice the frequency and slightly higher amplitude. So the black sinusoid, slightly higher amplitude than the blue one. So I'll just show it as another spike there. So this is just a rough sketch of the frequency content of this signal, because remember every sinusoid present would be represented as a spike in the frequency domain view. Okay, so let's just switch back into MATLAB now and we'll quit the demonstration, close the figures and let's plot this signal which I've created as SIG1. Let's put that 25. That specifies the highest frequency that I show. So I viewed this already myself just to, to get a better, make sure that I got the scales right on my axis. So here we have um, a maximum, that's 25 hertz along there. Um, and here's, here's the frequency content of the signal. 
So we have the magnitude of each, and we see the lowest frequency has a low amplitude or a low magnitude. The, the next lowest frequency is the high amplitude. Um, the, the third one here is a, a quite a low amplitude. I must have misread it off the, the graph, um, but it's quite a low amplitude. And the third one, um, or sorry, the fourth highest frequency is, is, has a higher amplitude than the, the one that's closest to it. Um, and we can see that the frequency content basically matches what we predicted. Okay. So this is the frequency domain view of the signal. So it's just another view of a of a signal that we can have. We're probably more comfortable with the time domain view still, but we have to get used to the frequency domain view. Okay. So let's take a look at the speech signal as well. We'll just go quickly through the last two. So I'm going to take a look at the speech signal, which was signal number two. And let's actually do the demonstration of it first. Sorry, for your demonstration. Two. So that, that was the speech signal, and we saw that there was lots of sinusoids in that. But there was a lot of higher amplitude sinusoids, so even up to at, at the stage where we have 11 sinusoids, there's a few dominant sinusoids or large sinusoids present in that signal. And all subsequent ones are um, of smaller amplitude. So, just, so we're getting smaller and smaller amplitudes being added later on. So we've got a few large ones and a lot of smaller ones. Okay, so let's take a look at the frequency domain view of that. And we'll need to show a higher range of frequencies because speech generally occupies frequency ranges from uh, about 50 hertz up to about 16,000 uh, hertz. So I'll show the first, we'll go up to 8,000 maybe. So I'll just show, I need to close that down, close all. And there's the frequency content up to the first 8000 hertz. And you can see there's dominant spikes in this, and each of those dominant spikes, as I call them, um, is associated with a, a, a frequency component or a sinusoid. So each of those spikes is associated with a sinusoid. And we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 relatively large sinusoids, and the rest of them are quite small, and you can see them down here, those lower amplitude sinusoids. Um, we'll take a, 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 a final look then at the last demonstration, which was the square wave, and there's the square wave, and we saw that, that it has sinusoids, and you can see there's a very dominant low frequency component, and then all the subsequent ones, the, the next lowest frequency component is this black one, um, and that's got a lower amplitude. The blue one there is probably not clear in the figure, but that blue one is a lower frequency, um, and it has a lower amplitude. So the lowest frequency has the highest amplitude, and as the frequency of the component or the sinusoid increases, the amplitude decreases. So I expect to see a sort of decay of, of uh, sinusoidal components when we look at it in the frequency domain. So let's just close that. And there we go, that matches what we predict. So there's our very strong low frequency sinusoid. The next uh, lowest frequency um, sinusoid has a higher amplitude and it decays over time. So each of these little spikes uh, represents a sinusoid. Okay, so that was the just a quick review of the demonstration signals that we use in the Fourier demonstration, and we just take a quicker look at the frequency domain content of those signals, or as I also refer to as a frequency domain view of those signals.